Welcome back, I'm Chris Kirshner. Florida Gymnastics has been dominant in its first three matches this season. Tonight they host the number one Oklahoma Sooners. Our own Chelsea Gates joins us live at the O-Dome. Chelsea, big matchup for the number two Gators. What can we expect at the O-Dome tonight? Yeah, Chris, it is a huge matchup this evening. Uh, the number two Florida Gators will host number one Oklahoma Sooners. Both of the teams are undefeated coming into this matchup, so there's a lot on the line. Chelsea, the Gators are coming off an emotional win last Friday. Bridget Sloan and Keisha Hunter had two perfect tens. Do you think they can keep up the momentum? It was a really emotional win last week. 10,000 people came out to support the home team. And like you said, back-to-back -back perfect tens by Bridget Sloan and Keisha Hunter. Um, this, the Florida Gators actually also scored their fifth highest uh, 198.05, that's the fifth highest in school history. Um, Bridget Sloan met with media earlier this week and talked about the amount of momentum and energy they had going into last week's matchup. She said the team is just as pumped up, so it should be a really exciting, competitive um, event this evening. Thanks a lot, Chelsea. And on a night where Florida's three-point shooting was poor and free throw shooting was downright awful, the Gators still found a way to bully the Bulldogs. Let's pick, let's pick this up in the second half. Mississippi State down one. Fred Thomas finds Gavin Ware for the easy two in the paint. Next possession, Florida's Patrick Young misses the hook shot, gets his own rebound, still throws it down. Florida up one. Late in the second, Bulldogs guard IJ Reddy thinks he has a layup, but the man child Young says no, not today. Let's take another look. Oh my goodness. Then Casey Prather, wham bam, the two handed slam. Gators go on to win 62 to 51. The Gators' next opponent, Texas AM, enters tomorrow's contest riding a four game losing streak. The Aggies have the worst scoring offense in the SEC, averaging 61.6 points per game. Meanwhile, the Gators have the best defense in the SEC. One positive for the Aggies, they are second in the SEC when it comes to protecting the three-point arc. Tip-off is set for 4 p.m. And over on the women's side, Alabama didn't get to Gainesville until 4.30 last night because of bad weather. Tip-off was at 7. With no time to prep, would the tide be rolled? Gators sophomore Carly Needles would have a say in that. Needles drained threes from everywhere on the court, from the corner, from the elbow. It didn't matter where she was. Needles goes five of seven from the arc. Tide rolled, Gators win 75 to 67. And the last time two number one seeds squared off in the Super Bowl was in 2009. Peyton Manning was the quarterback of the losing Indianapolis Colts. This year he quarterbacks the AFC champion Denver Broncos. Manning has the chance to become the first QB to lead two different teams to glory when his Broncos take on the Seahawks. Peyton last won it all in 2006 with the Colts. This also marks the first time since 1990 where the number one offense, Denver, faces the number one defense, Seattle. However, Seattle has the edge in the running game with beast mode, Mar Marshawn Lynch. Lynch has 249 yards and three TDs in the playoffs and a newly signed endorsement deal with Skittles. Taste the rainbow, Marshawn. With all the hoopla surrounding the unknown weather of the game, will it snow? Will there be freezing temperatures? Will it rain skills in the end zone when Lynch scores? One thing is certain, this one will be a classic. 